Welcome to another episode of Two Ales and Hockey Tales with Wally. And today, our episode is brought to you by Min Pro Elite Training in Owen Sound. And today, I am so excited to have on a 39-year-old from Owen Sound, Ontario, an ECHL First Team All-Star, an ECHL Champion, an AHL All-Star, he had a 49 goal year in the East Coast, which is pretty tough to not get that last one. He's had multiple 30 plus goal seasons in the AHL. He has won the Fred T. Hunt trophy in the AHL, which we may need to confirm if that is the Lady Bing. And he's played 40 NHL games between Pittsburgh. Penguins and the Edmonton Oilers, and he's a hometown hero and staple of the Owen Sound Platers and Grays. Welcome to the podcast, Chris Bernard. How are you? Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you for coming on. Um, we don't really know each other. I have, I've heard of you, and then you joined the Sogin Shore Winter Hawks when I was a Quickly. Ripley Wolf. So then I heard about you again. But um, the other, the way you've came up in the podcast was actually Mr. Justin Miser. What a man. He is quite the guy. And we'd actually, you know what, now that we have sponsors on the podcast, we do need to give Woody's Pub um, out of Edina, Minnesota, a shout out um, for getting this all started because he was, that bar in his basement was the first sponsor of the podcast and let me tell you, we're really running with it now, Harry. So thank you, Justin <laughs> Miser. <laughs> so you had some fun with him too? Yeah, I had uh, quite a season with that guy. He's, uh, he's quite the dude, let's just say that. <laughs> I would agree. And you guys won it, but we'll get into that later. Um, random one here as well. Actually, no, nope, we're not getting to that either yet. I heard a random one, and I guess it was from Barrett Eggett's. Um oh yeah, he said that your family did some billeting, and is it true that Dan Snyder lived at your house? Yeah, um, so when I was six to seven years old, we moved uh, from kind of a, a downtown neighborhood, and we moved into a subdivision um, up by a cemetery, Greenwood Cemetery, up on the west side of town, and uh, yeah, next thing I know, we had we had billets in there. Uh, and we were the billet family and we had guys living there since I was six, seven years old. And up until I was, uh, well, I was playing pro for many, many years. And my parents were still doing it. So is that right? Dan Snyder, uh, Dan Snyder, Sean Avery, Jamie store, um, Ray Edwards, Ray Edwards was our first guy. Um, he went on to be my, my, uh, first two, or he coached me my first two years of, of pro hockey. Uh, so that was pretty cool kept a relationship for a long time and through the um, building he lived with yeah. your parents and then became your coach and pro that's right so i i remember sitting on the couch with him when i was six seven years old and we'd be play fighting he was a big tough guy in the ohl and we'd be play fighting and i'd be punching him i, I remember my mom and dad yelling don't you hit him that hard <laughs> and him just being like that's not hard don't worry <laughs> you know he was one tough son of a gun Oh man, that's uh, that's interesting that they had the love he's, for it, but they might must he's love actually having hockey the, uh, around. Huh? He 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 is actually the assistant coach in Calgary right now. Oh, is that right? Yeah, so he's been out there for a few years. So, yeah. so where did his playing career? What was the name? Ray Edwards. So he he was in Owen Sound, and then his overage season, he got he got shipped off to Belleville, I believe, and then from there played uh, six eight years, maybe in the East Coast League, maybe not even that much. And then he went on, he started coaching like right away out of playing. He was player coach and then just kept going. Yeah. Some of those guys that yeah. get right into the player coach thing can jump on and get into it. And then there's also yeah. the guys of the East coast that there are guys that maybe aren't that talented, but they yeah. have the brain for the game, right? They like see they the understand game differently, it. right? They just understand the game. They see it the, a different way. And yeah, sometimes Literally. having all the Literally. talent may, makes you not as good of a coach, right? But Some of those uh, guys don't like the game as much as, you know, the grinders and the, the guys that aren't as talented, right? Like, it's very true. Absolutely. Um, so, I guess, uh, did you also, because did you also have the MacArthur boys li live oh, with boy. you? Did you oh, they yeah, live Zoe. with you? 
Oh, Joey. Yeah, Joey lived there for two years. Yeah, our junior B season, and then uh, the year I went on to play in the OHL, my first year, uh, he came back and he was living down in the basement there for a couple of years. Yeah, he was uh, quite the human being. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Well, uh, just curious, um, what type of player was he then? What role would oh, he big play? Oh, Joe, he was good stay-at-home defenseman. He liked to throw the body around for for a little guy. He liked to throw the body around a little bit. Yeah, I can um, see that. Yeah. Loved to crush beers and loved to tell jokes and. He wasn't the smartest human being around, and uh, him and his brother. If you got his brother around, it was even it was even worse. Well, so, um, so okay, moving on to uh, where and what are you doing now? Um, because our sponsor today is Min Pro Elite Training. Um, because the lucky boys of the Concordia area, Bruce County, are going to be lucky enough to have a Zoom call. And you've been kind enough to train the little fellas uh, this <laughs> weekend. And I know they're all looking forward to it. And um, I'm curious to see your training techniques because I'm trying to teach some kids nowadays. So um, give us a rundown of our sponsor today, Min Pro Elite Training. So I retired from hockey and I was uh, – I honestly – I was um, working at a sports store here in town with the intentions of taking it over. Um, short, long story, I realized it wasn't for me about six, eight months into it. It was kind of realized retail, it just wasn't for me. Um, so I got out of there. And what I really had a passion for was obviously hockey. Loved hockey. Uh, loved uh, working with kids. Loved coaching. Um, so decided to do some on ice uh, summer camps and some skills and so some group stuff and then, uh, another passion been, since I was like 30 I really started enjoying working out I don't know what took so long <laughs> um, but uh, once I turned 30 I really enjoyed the working out and um, so I got uh, my personal training certificate um, worked at a local gym for a couple years uh, COVID came started training out of a out of the garage um funny story is not my garage it was my next door neighbor's garage worked out perfect she was a crossfit uh guru and she likes the crossfit stuff so um she just offered all throw my equipment in there throw all your equipment in here we'll run a little gym so her and her friend had a certain time slot that i wasn't allowed to train in, and then i would train my clients out of her garage it worked out pretty good anyways um uh, october came and i was like i september october it was starting to get cold out so it was uh we got to find something here like i'm not going to go back to the local gym um so we opened up uh found a location and opened up a little training facility um obviously love athletes that's my goal is to train athletes but um got all kind of fitness levels in there we got moms we got dads we got uh we got tons of kids that come in and out of there uh each week and um it's been great i love it um where the name came from of Min Pro it was just I, I didn't want to use my written like my name into it, but I wanted uh, something to do to recognize me um, that were local around here and kind of came up with Min Pro Elite Training one day with my kids and my wife sitting around the table and away we go. Yeah, no, well, congratulations for getting her going, man. It's like when I named this podcast, it was just actually a neighbor. I told him <laughs> what, what the vision was. And he, he texted me this name about, uh, about two hours later when I was going to bed. And then I send her off to Lee in Cardiff that makes all the posters and he made the logo. <laughs> and next thing you know, we're doing podcasts. That's great. You keep in touch with people over there. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, they're fantastic fans that, um, yeah, they just, I don't know. They treated you so good yeah. that you became really yeah. good friends and you could actually speak English with them. And I know you were in Germany. Um, so there's a question for you. Can do Sprick and ein bisschen Deutsch? Ah, uh, nein, bitte. No. Is that right? But do, uh, do uh, wir wohnen so, in, in Deutschland für fünf Jahre, oder? Uh, fünf, yeah. Yeah. So you uh, Just never caught on. Just everything was in English. Um, my wife took a course our first year over there, and it just... Uh, yeah. We like we could go to the grocery store and get by with a couple of words, but most people where we were, the cities we were in, most people could could speak English, and uh, they were pretty good about it. And if we tried to speak German, they would speak English back to us because they already knew. Oh yeah, so. no, I know. I I was, was there. I was there. I was there for six years, but I was in a second league where 
Yeah. yeah. No, it just came up in the Bobby Raymond episode that he couldn't really speak German and he was there for like seven years. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, really guys, for a while. I just, I had really good friends and there was, there was a night after I was there for four years where, uh, where my buddy hammer just said to me, like, I, I tried to speak English with them. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't try. I wouldn't speak. And he yeah. said, come on, Waldo, like, come on. You've been here four years. And he said it all in German and I'd had a few drinks. And then I guess that push, I decided to try the rest of the night. And apparently I could in fact do it. I just needed the, um, ayas as they would call them in yeah, yeah, yeah. Germany you know yeah um anyways moving on um rundown of minor hockey to the owen sound platers because which is be your hometown yep so yeah played owen sound from uh well whenever we could skate until uh major peewee uh just played local rep hockey and um it was great we had a great team great group of guys uh whack of us Went on to play Junior C, Junior B, Junior A. Uh, two or three guys went on to play university hockey uh, in Ontario. Um, yeah. Um, major, minor Bantam came and AAA, the Grey Bruce Highlanders, became uh, an organization. So um, there was, geez, there was a bunch of us, five, six, seven of us that all, well, let's go try AAA. And we did. And a bunch of us made it. And, I uh, played two years at AAA, which was uh, the what first age year was that? That was a major ban, minor bantam, so fourteen. And Owen Sound would have been at least a single A or double A team. Yeah, before Owen that, Sound right? was single A. Yep, single A hockey, but we were playing in the Georgian Bay Loop. Like every year, that's what we played with Georgian Bay Loop. So I mean, you're going to King, uh, you go to Collingwood, you go to Meaford, Wasaga Beach, uh, Penetang, Midland. Like real small centers, right? And um, not the greatest hockey at all, but um, just grew in love with it. I uh, went and played AAA for two years. And you'd um, have all those guys living with you that love hockey too, right? That's got to well, rub off on you a bit. I, I think that that's what really pushed me was, you know, I grew up watching the, I go to the attack, or the, I guess the Platers back then. You go to the Platers games since I was six, seven years old. And, and you'd know the guys. You knew, you knew, you, yeah, you knew half the team, and you'd you'd stand at the tunnel where they come out, and you're tapping their high, you're high fiving them as they come out, and they're giving you sticks if they got a broken stick or something, and they're handing it to you, and they're flipping pucks up to you and warm up, and um, just grew in love with that, and you know the way they lived and the lifestyle they had, and, um, yeah, so well, played, um, yeah, and then you did it, I, I tried out for AAA, and I didn't think I was going to make it at all, I really didn't think I would and then I remember my dad asked me one night he called from work and said uh if they ask you to to sign with the team like what are you going to say and I was, well yeah I want to do it and he's like well I don't know if we can afford it <laughs> yeah all right well I'd like to play and he's, all right let me talk to your mom <laughs> you know and it was funny enough that night they asked me to sign him he must know something right and looking back at the way things work he already knew and, and I didn't right but yeah. Um, so the first year wasn't great. I didn't have that great of a season. I, uh, wasn't that, um, important on the team say, and, uh, we'd have call up guys come from like Durham and Garden. Cause a lot of the, a lot of the guys hadn't, a lot of the good players in the area hadn't gone yet because it was the first year of existence and they didn't really see a point in going to play triple a until it was really up and running, running well. And, uh, the second year went back and it was awesome. Loved it. We lost a couple of guys. We gained a few guys. We had a great team, great season, did really well. And then, um, the next year, was able to play junior B. Um, tried out for the uh, for the Platers that year. Actually, I got an invite to to try out with them as a walk on, as an underage. Um, did okay. I probably was a little bit out of place, but I wasn't at that level yet. Went and played junior B for a year. Had a real good season. Real good coaches that you know pushed me and kind of kept my love for the game and trying to get better every day. Whenever you were on the ice back, then you practice twice a week. You had two practices after school. Um, so when you say you did the walk on tryout with the Platers as a, yeah. yet, like an underage, does that mean you're giving up your scholarship chances or no? No. Cause I didn't play any exhibition games back then. If you played an exhibition game, you're right. Then I, it's over. I think your scholarship, that's when it, 
that's when it, it was gone. Uh, but I didn't play any exhibition games, just just training camp and a few inter squad games and all that kind of stuff. And uh, it was kind of an eye opener for me. I wasn't at that level yet. So, um, but it was good. It was fun. It was a great experience. Um, next year, I played junior B. It was awesome. I, I won rookie of the year, the whole league that year. Totally didn't expect it. Wasn't, didn't think anything of it. And next thing you know, we're, we're coming home from from the uh, junior B ceremonies or whatever they had all the teams, all the teams went, all the players went and sat around and they did all the awards and championships and all that kind of stuff. And was able to win rookie of the year somehow. And um, you know, on the way home, we're looking at uh, the little draft ratings. There's a little magazine came out of that draft ratings. I was rated like number three or four overall. I think it was the blue line or something like that. It was a little magazine to the OHL. Like, to the OHL draft, and I'm just like, there's no way. Like, this is a joke, right? And the coach calls me and calls me up the front of the bus, and he's like, look at this. Have you seen this? And I was, uh, yeah, I guess. Like, totally blew my mind away, right? And so how high drafted. did you go? I went ninth. I was rated, like, by OHL Central Scouting in the 13, 15 range, something like that. But but then you went to your hometown. So being from Owen Sound, I think Owen Sound was kind of obligated to – you know, take a local guy that high and um, first round. And yeah, it was awesome. I, I mean, it, is it the place where I wanted to be? No, I, I watched guys grow up, you know, in my house that were moving away from home and um, away when they were 16, 17 years old. I mean, it was kind of what I wanted to do. Um, kind of wanted to experience that. And, um, but anyways, you're playing in the OHL, so you're happy and, mixed emotions you know you get to stay at home with your friends and and you that's what made it kind of hard playing here was you got friends you got teammates and you're trying to juggle both and um, it's easier to just be a hockey player and move away right i i I stayed at home till i went to western michigan as uh i guess i was 17 turning 18 but like I, i was through high school as living at home and it's it, it isn't easy if you want to really be a hockey player to yeah. be around both right yeah and then you're living at home and you got four or five teammates living with you like <laughs> the, my first year in the ohl we had five guys living there so how there was many myself. bedrooms did your parents have well that's the thing is we only had we had three uh three bedrooms we had one in the basement and then what they did for joey MacArthur and another guy was they just put two single beds down in the rec room Sounds like uh put a curtain around them. They put a curtain between them, so they kind of had their own privacy. And it was looking back at it, it was kind of weird, but you know what? We loved it. Um, all five of us got along real well, and uh it was a lot of fun, man. We had Joe MacArthur driving a half ton truck with a with a flatbed on it. <laughs> <laughs> and he knew you just knew who he was, and he just giggled, but um great, it was awesome, it was fun. Yeah, that's uh, that sounds fun. But you, uh, okay, actually, well, I have you on this pod because when people ask me if I know you, or then I mentioned to a couple people you were coming on, the first thing they say to me is, "Oh, the Kugel incident, right?" Which, oh uh, yeah. Um, fun fact for the pod is my name in Germany in Biedingheim was Kugelblitz. So, oh, it, um, do you know what Kugel is in German? <laughs> I don't. No, it's round and blitz is lightning. So my name was a round <laughs> lightning. <laughs> that is what they called me. So that guy's name was round, just so you know. Um, but anyways, um, do you, can we just discuss that? Because I did watch it on YouTube. My research team watched it. And I had a good chuckle about how different hockey used to be because that is how we grew up. That's how hockey was. It was a complete... That's- it was a, a, there were times where hockey was a complete sideshow and it like had yeah. nothing to do with being a talented hockey player. Yeah, it was honestly, God, like you watch the games now and you watch the guys cut into the middle and stick handling, and you're like, that, that wasn't happening back then. Like, Ever. you wouldn't have a head Ever. on your shoulders. You wouldn't have a head in your shoulder. You get to the red line, you're dumping it in so you can try and run somebody as fast as you can. Like, you weren't making plays at the blue line, you weren't turning back up at the hash marks you weren't doing any of that kind of stuff um and then you never knew when someone was going to flip a lid and just grab you and knock the snot out of you but um that story uh, yeah uh, 
I'm in the corner wrestling around with some guy. I see some guy, some guy going nuts out in the middle and he's pointing at me and he's skating towards and, me. It was just an instinct. Well, yeah. Well, well it, and they, like, if he would have grabbed you, like, no, and oh. I would have, I would have done the same thing. And like those guys back then that like, if they grabbed a hold of you, you could yeah. not do anything about it. Yeah. They were freaks. Um, <laughs> yeah, it just the in, instant reaction of just get the fuck out of here and oh, yeah. uh, away I went. And, um, yeah, took a lot of flack for it. Did Obviously, you? throughout the oh, throughout the years, every I think even in oh pro yeah, hockey, back back number, when everybody was chirping, right? Oh, yeah. uh, chirping and chirping, chirping. But I fought now my everybody's next buddies, shift. right? Now nobody even chirps. <laughs> yeah, I fought my next shift. I uh, went out there and lined up, and there was this guy. He was just giving it to me about how big of a pussy I was, and this and that, and. Uh, all right, well, when this puck drops, I'm going to jump in. I <laughs> ended up knocking his visor off his off his helmet. Anyway, like, I'm not a tough guy. I wasn't big. I wasn't strong. And, no, and um, you shouldn't have to fight that guy, and he shouldn't be coming at you. He shouldn't be pointing at you well, and coming at you. He shouldn't have been playing in the league, to be honest with you. Yeah, no, exactly. But good for him, for, for them, for finding a guy like that to, to play that role. But I guess. Uh, no, I – I, yeah, no, I don't think you're a pussy for doing that. I would have been gone way before that. Uh, I well, think if, I, if you watch the video again, you can see one or two other guys skate in the other direction too. Oh yeah. Nobody was I going was near just, him. Everybody, yeah. you, you, you were just in the corner. You were cornered and you were like, I got it. This is my chance. I have to get out now. Fast as, fast as I've skated in my life. I'm pretty but. sure I uh, YouTube uh, <laughs> something about the name. And then the other thing that, came up was like him knocking out butterbead so you know <laughs> i'm pretty sure you didn't want to stay in the corner That's just right. saying i agree with your decision but um so we talked about being at home and having your friends and all that around but you did because my research team was looking at this five minutes before puck drop is you did get traded away from your hometown how did that feel i yeah you know, I, I, I knew for hockey wise, it was the best thing for me. Um, yeah, it was good. It was just different. I had never been away from home. So like when it actually happened, it was just kind of like, poof, uh, I, we were on a road trip on the Eastern swing in, uh, Kingston, Ottawa, Belleville. And I know we were in Kingston. We had uh, night before a game. I think it was a Saturday night. Um, my agent called and said, would you go to St. Mike's if they traded for you? I'm like, Yes, right away, because I wasn't doing very well. Coach and I weren't the closest <laughs> as yeah. a player coach. and um, You know when it, you're uh, not in it with the guy, yeah. Just up and down the lineup all the time. and Just wasn't – maybe I wasn't consistent looking back or maybe he didn't like the way I played. Whatever. doesn't doesn't really matter. Anyways, um, ended up getting food poisoning that night. We went to Eastside Merrill's to eat. Uh, went back to my room, and I was puking all night puking all night um next game we played in ottawa just laid on the bus i couldn't even get off the bus i was just so sick right so uh we get back we get back to Owen sound the monday uh roll in for practice and they're just like coaches like i can't do it and they're like ah come on in and sit down anyways we got something to tell you just didn't even cross my mind like wasn't even thinking about it and they're like yeah you can trade to st mike's i'm like Oh, that's why my agent asked if I want to trade <laughs> if I would go. Just didn't clue in. Just like when days, your right? old man was like, Do you want to play triple yeah. <laughs> right? Just back then he just didn't it didn't doesn't really clue in it. until you get yeah. older and you realize what's really going on. That's right. Yeah. So that happened and uh yeah. So then you go to the city. To... You're in the city then, eh? Yeah, in completely different worlds. You go from Owen Sound to Toronto and you're seven. I was drafted uh, by Brampton. 18. I was drafted by Brampton. That was my option of going from Elmira to Brampton. And I was like, yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we went to the city. And, uh, it just didn't fit in with me. The city wasn't for me. Actually, did we played at a Maple Leaf Gardens that year, and it was awesome. Loved every game. It was amazing. Um it was a different life there. Like the height, the um, St. Mike's buzzers, the junior A team always got to practice after school. So they had the three o'clock practice and we'd have to wait till four thirty, five o'clock to get on the ice. So, I mean, I was already done high school. So, so you just waited no, around all day. You waited around all day, all day. Just and for practice. 
just for a practice. Uh, I mean, every practice, it's important, right? But when you wait around all day and you're sitting there doing nothing and just trying to keep yourself occupied, just it, was, it wasn't the greatest lifestyle. And um, yeah. It sounds, yeah. So, sounds like Hellbron, Germany of the second league in uh, <laughs> Germany when uh, you have so um, you have a handful of young guys that go to uh, like high school or something. So yep. the team decides to practice at 445 at night. Yep. So then you hang out with your family. But realistically, instead of getting practice over and being able to travel and see places and go for lunch and dinners yep. and see the sights and do the things instead you wait around for practice <laughs> practice that's right yeah i love yeah. i always loved practice it was one of my favorite parts of hockey but yeah, um, but as you retire you miss those you miss i do i miss that, i actually i miss all every i miss before practice i miss after practice i miss um yep. i don't miss the bag skates but i miss just all of it like a guy going and like you know falling and crashing the boards yep. or stepping on a puck and the boys all yep. give it to him right when I went back to play, when I came home and I went to play with the Soggy Shores Winterhawks there, we uh, it was part of like guys. We get ten guys to practice, and it was like, well, like why do guys not want to come to practice? This is the best part of the week right here. So we get one practice, we get to come hang out with the guys, and get I know. sweat on, and work yeah. on some stuff. And that was the one thing that it kind of drove me off about playing there. It was just nobody, nobody Car- came to practices. And, and yeah, yeah, it was. You know, I'd be showing, I'd be driving 35 minutes to go to practice at 9.30 at night. And you're like, why am I doing this? I got three kids at home and, you know, yeah. no, and going I, to work the, the next day. The Wolves, it wasn't the same as that. There were guys, everybody was at practice. Everybody wanted to win and guys yeah. were into it. And it yeah. was, it was that, but that, it wasn't like that when I first got to that team, it was like that at near the end, they were, they were into it and they thought they were getting there and they were working towards it, which was, it was actually pretty cool to see, but um, let's get away from senior a here. Let's get into, <laughs> uh, so I did look okay at your goal scoring prowess. Cause that's kind of what you're known for when you look through your career, but as a uh, scout here um, with my research team is it didn't really get going until your last year in the OHL. Um, and then um, you eased into pro and then you really took off. So what was it about getting out of St. Mike's and wherever else you went that got you scoring goals? So on the same day, two years in a row, I got traded. So from, uh, I believe it was year 2000, January 9th of 2000. I got traded from um, Owen Sound to St. Mike's. January 9th, 2001, I got traded from St. Mike's to Oshawa. The best thing that's ever happened in my in my hockey career was I got dra- I got traded there. I, you know, I wasn't happy about it. I had no trade clause. So I had to say yes or no to it. And I agreed to it um, just because I felt like St. Mike's didn't want me anymore. And if I said no, it'd be like, oh, sure, they're just going to sit me every game anyway. So I was like, sure, I'll If a I'll team go. wants you to uh, to get traded, then you 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 get traded you if know, you want to keep right? playing hockey. Yeah. yeah. Who If you don't – if people don't want you, then you don't want to be there, in my opinion. That's, it, right. it, that's anywhere in the world. That's anything in life. Yep. If, if people don't want you there, then it's she's time to move on. Yep. Well, here's the thing is I got traded for a goal scorer. Like they, they literally sat me down and said, we're trading you because we need a goal scorer and Lindsay Plunkett. And I went, okay, that's fine. Back then I, I wasn't having a great season. Um, anyway, who get traded to Oshawa. The first coach had the utmost respect for me and the way I played. And I had all the responsibilities in the world on that team. And like within two weeks, I was an assistant captain and like, he was just leaning on me for leadership. And, and um, I was a top guy and I was, and then you um, got the first, confidence and you, you start feeling exactly. it and you get out there and you're feeling the puck and then you score, you score a couple as soon all you got to do is really score one right on a new team. And then you, you score start, one the juices are flowing, right? That's right. And, uh, did okay. When I first got there, it was the next year when you got there, you felt comfortable. Uh, you knew the coach liked you and he was putting you in a leadership role and, um, you're playing with great players, man. man my, my centerman that year when I was in Oshawa, my last year was Nathan Horton. It was either Nathan Horton or Jamie Johnson, who was still a, a, one of my best friends um, after even after hockey. 
but like Nathan Horton or Jamie Johnson, both legit playmakers. And Nathan Horton was a 16 year old that dominated the OHL back then. Oh, I, like, I, so yeah. No, no, if you listen to the pods, I'm from Elmira. Um, that's why I brought up Dan Snyder was, um, was we won the Sutherland cup against Nathan yeah. Horton when he was in Thorold and he was yeah. like, he was 15. 14, that was in the 15, year. Yeah. Yeah. That would be the year before he went with you. And yeah. we, we had to actually have Kyle rank, um, like chase him around the ice. Yeah. He chased him around the ice everywhere, like everywhere. Yeah. He, ne- he never left the side for the whole series. We, we, we didn't shadow him one game. And I think he had like five to seven points and he was yeah. 15 years old. He was unbelievable. He was so big and strong. He was like a man playing against little kids. It's really too bad that he had the injuries he had. Exactly. Eh? Yep. Yep. Exactly. Poor guy. But yeah. Hopefully he feels game. good now, right? Like that is the game. There's so many guys that are battered nowadays. Okay. We got to move on though. Cause I see you get out of the OHL. And um, so you started scoring goals and you had some options um, but you end up with the Pensacola Ice Pilots. And why that is important to me is that is where I had signed um, the year I decided to actually go to Germany. I was on my way to Pensacola and I had seen where the apartments were. I saw you lived on the golf courses, <laughs> on the water. And I was like, you think I'm living in Daytona Beach, Ohio again? I am going to Pensacola um, and that's where I was going to go in the East coast, but I never did end up making it there. Cause I did a U-turn and hit the airport to Germany. So what was it like? What was my, what would have my year looked like? Cause I think they went bankrupt that year and we're never in the coast again. The year I would have been there. <laughs> it was, uh, definitely a, a different world. You weren't really, you didn't know what to expect. Um, so how I got there was, uh, went to Ottawa senators rookie camp. Went to, uh, didn't make it to the main camp, but they wanted me to go to Binghamton's uh, camp in the American League. So I went to the Binghamton Senators camp, spent uh, two weeks there, was close to kind of making the team. I was one of the last cuts out of there. Um, But the assistant coach in Pensacola was Ray Edwards. So Ray Edwards was, you know, my first. uh, The billet. The billet at our family's house um, when I was six, seven years old. So. Um, kept in touch with him over the years. And I think my dad probably convinced him, Hey, can you give my son a try or can you get him to pro? And, um, I ended up, he, he dragged me down or he didn't drag me down there. He offered me, Hey, like, why don't you come down here and give it a go? And yeah, hundred percent. Like I got nowhere else to go. I don't know what else I'm going to do. So after Binghamton camp, I went down there and yeah, it was, what a lifestyle. The sun shining, uh, apartments were on the beach. You walk out your back door, you take some steps down, and you're on the Gulf of Mexico. You look out your bedroom window, and you got dolphins. Like, dolphins are swimming in the, in the Gulf of Mexico. And you, what a life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's uh, what do they call it? The panhandle? Yeah. It was the, uh, yeah, it was the panhandle. Yeah. Yeah. But no, it just, it just, yeah. <laughs> just the lifestyle down there. It actually did snow over Christmas for a couple of days, but it was gone and right back to the beach. And so we, we lived on an island. Uh, I think it was called Gulf Breeze. I'm pretty uh, sure that's where I was moving. Yeah. yeah. Uh, was it yeah. on a golf course? Uh, we weren't on the golf course, no. Was there a golf course there? Yes, there was golf courses. We golfed quite a bit. Um, I remember the <laughs> Sounds one Sounds nice, lunch- but Germany was fun. <laughs> Germany was good, but Pensacola was. <laughs> you walk out your back door first thing in the morning, have your morning coffee, which we didn't do when we were 21 years old. But you walk outside and you got, you know, you're uh, you're looking at the water. You're, just, you're in a different world, especially when you're from Owen Sound. Yeah. Beautiful Owen Sound. I, yeah. No. So, okay. Uh, we better keep going because you got a lot of stuff here. Is, um, so that coach there, Ray Edwards, right, was the name? Yep. Um, yep. So you said you had him your first two years of pro. So that means you go with him from the Ice Pilots, which I think I have it in my brain. I don't have it written down. But you had about 15 goals, I'd say, give or take. You know, not that much. You What role are you playing? About third line, second line, maybe so, a little power yeah, play? We were called. We were called the clock killers. So we were third line guys, um, Chad Thoyer, myself, and uh, Trevor Ullman 
And we were called the clock killers. We would play in the offensive zone the entire game. And we'd run guys and we'd hit guys and, and we'd never just take cycle a shot the puck on and net. cycle the puck and cycle the puck. <laughs> and I don't know if we ever took a shot on net. <laughs> Couple and wraparounds. That's it. Yeah. We weren't looking Bring to it from plays. behind the net out. Yeah. I understand. Not allowed yeah. to pass it from behind the goal line. I get it. Yeah. And then we traded uh, Chad Thoyer and I think uh, we had a Cluche. Oh man. I can't think of his first name right now. Cluche hey, was playing the right wing. I'd be on left wing. And then we had Baldwin in the middle. And we would just cycle the puck, cycle the puck, and hit guys and cause havoc and just kill the clock. And the coach would always put us out there against the other team's top line. So we knew what our job was. Um, I don't think I scored a goal for 15, 20 games my first but, year pro. But that's the thing. is you. You're, that's actually kind of like how my rookie year went was like I played with Justin Miser, right? And like mm-hmm. we, were, we shut down the other team's top lines. But like I was the guy that that wasn't natural for. Yeah. Um, that they were helping me learn that part of the game and um, that stuff happens. But you go then, I guess where I was going is you go from Pensacola to wherever San Angelo, San Angelo Texas. Saints. So, so is that the same coach then, right? Same coach. Okay. So what happened there was I um, being down in Pensacola, you're not getting, you're not getting much looks in the American hockey league. I'm young, 21, 22, and you got older guys in your ear telling you you got to get out of Pensacola. You got to go up to the Northern Division, and that's where guys are getting called up from. You got to get up there. You got to go. You got to go. You got to go. It's not so, fun to live there. I knew that from stories from guys and, and my brother also. Um, but it was uh, – I, I said I didn't want to go back to Pensacola, and he's like, well, we'll get you on a two-way with Springfield. So that kind of convinced me to go back. So I'd be on a two-way contract with Springfield and Pensacola. Then one day he called me. It was like the coach was uh, Todd Gordon. Awesome guy. I got along with him. Great. Um, but he, he called and was like, I, I'm wrong. I can't get you the two-way. Can't give it to you. Can't give it to you. And here's what I can give you in, the, in Pensacola contract. And I just, you know what? I can't get a two-way. I'm not coming. So I pretty much asked for a trade. And he said, I'm not trading it. So what happened was you got, Edwards, if you go to the central league, you don't need to get traded. You don't you can need just go. Yeah, you just go. And Ray Edwards got the coaching job in San Angelo and being close with him. And I called him one day and I just said, do you have any spots open? I'd love to come play with for you. And he goes, Chris, this isn't Pensacola, Florida. <laughs> this is San Angelo, Texas. It's not the same type of city. And I don't, I just want to play hockey, Ray. And I want to play for someone that's, you know, that I could, that trust me and will have confidence in me. And I just want to play hockey and have some fun. And he goes, if you're up for that, that's fine. I'll bring you. And sure enough, he, he signed me the next day. Um, him and Gordon, I guess, got into it pretty good uh, through a couple of phone calls. Um, played there. I don't know what happened there. We had a good team. We had a great, great young team. We had a lot of fun off the ice, obviously. Uh, the bars and the pubs. And I think there was, it was college town. I think it was San Angelo State was there. Um, San so, Angelo State. So obviously a smaller school, but I'm like um, different pubs every night. Were, they were rocking, right? So we were young. We were playing in the Central Hockey League. We were there. Um, it, it was a lot of fun. We had a great team, a lot of a lot of good players, and somehow I ended up scoring a bunch of goals and making the right. All Star game. And well, that's what just, that's what I got there. Is like so. Yeah. Your last year of the OHL was when you started finding your real scoring touch. And then you, you grinded out that first year, um, yep. protecting the puck and working the cycle. Um, but then Topping you go, the puck but, in half. <laughs> <laughs> but then you go to the central league. Well, I would just say like showing everybody the ass, right? Like, you no, know, I didn't work do that. In the boards. No, no. no? Okay. Chop it. Just chop at it. See where uh, it goes. Okay. Well then. Um, the, but then you go to San Angelo and you like, probably in your eyes, you're like, well, I'm going to the central league. I may as well like have fun and like, and like have some more confidence. Right. Like when I went to the second league of Germany, that's when I had confidence. I was like, well, I'm going to the second league of Germany. I didn't know anything about it. I was like, I just figured it wasn't good. And I, then you go there and you got a little swagger. So you probably go to the central league and you're like, yeah, let's have some fun. Let's do this. So I went there. I, I remember being out. Uh, my first lunch was with an older guy. He was in his thirties. His name was Chris, uh, Chris peach. 
and then uh, Trevor Weisgerber. So they, they take me out for lunch to this one place and they're talking it up and they're like, yeah, yeah we should have a really good team. Like uh, talking about this guy should score 30, this guy should score 20. And they're talking about all the offense we're going to have. And then they looked at me and they're like, well, you're coming from the coast. You had 15 in the coast. You better score 25 here. And I went, well, I don't know about that. I was scored 15 last year. Like, I don't know like, how good I'm going to be. And then you get on the ice with them and you get playing some games and you get building some confidence. You're like, yeah, we'll be all right. We can, we can do okay here. And um, had some good line mates that year. Ryan Finnerty and Weisgerber were my line mates. And uh, Ryan Finnerty? Yeah. You remember that name? Uh, oh, he was well, over. He, he's, he was well, he's just in, like, yeah. Like, I don't actually personally know him. I just know yeah. he's like a. He's a legend over in that British league there. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like he's a, he's been a coach. He, uh, yeah. he was in Cardiff. He was in, he was everywhere. And I just yep. know who he is and I know the name and I know he has a lot of respect over there. So if you have respect over in that league, I got respect for you. Cause that means you're just a yeah. dandy in my eyes. He was, he was a, he was a good guy. He was a beauty and he, um, yeah, he was a real good player, a little rat, just a little rat, kind of a right-handed Sean Avery. Oh, dear. You know, just a rat. Not that, not Sean Avery, Sean. And but just he lived the way with he you. Sean Avery lived with you. Yes, well, he did. So we never really even touched on that. I guess we may as well go back to then your childhood <laughs> here quick, because I'm curious now that uh, that came back up. What yeah. was that like? Because uh, so, I... I like I don't know like I see him put you know what stuff on his we were like we were like brothers like not brothers but uh we would fight every day he you know, he'd want to fight he'd be chirping and he'd be acting the way the way Sean Avery would act and and what uh, age is he and what age are you so he's an 80 I'm an 81 so it was a year difference he was an underage on uh Owen Sound with the uh with the Owen Sound players and I think I was still in triple A I don't think I was playing junior B yet and uh, he just run his mouth, run his mouth until you get fed up with it. You grab him, and then you start. Next thing you know, you're throwing each other on the couch. You're kicking the shit out of each other. But that's just the way he was. Like he just wanted attention. Um, so the way he is now, not as much of an asshole. But like he, that's the way he was when he was younger too, right? But no, it was fun. He brought a lot of humor to the house. I tell you, like, there was a lot of laughter. The shit he would do, and the shit the <laughs> shit he would cause, and people to get upset. And, yeah. Uh, it's yeah. funny because people don't change like people are who they are like you just yeah. you grow you adapt but I don't really know how much you change because I've been talking to everybody even from to my childhood on this podcast and man they all seem pretty similar <laughs> than <laughs> when I, from what I remember okay yeah. so where we were in uh, San Angelo and you were starting to bury goals and we're almost to my one of my one of the pod's favorite people Justin Miser Harry yeah. um, we're almost there so we got to get out of San Angelo and nothing crazy happened there so let's then you go from scoring well geez every time you're one away from the big numbers 39 goals in san angelo so you're one away from 40 to then going to the alaska aces and scoring 49 one away again so um how do you score 49 goals in the east coast and have people done that since then I don't know if anyone's done that since i know wes goldie was a former teammate of mine in Owen sound platers Scored 46, I believe, when he was in Alaska a couple years after that. But I don't think he got to 49. I feel like there was a guy I played against in Denmark that had a really big one. Um, he was like a stand in front of the net, not a big skater guy. Ah, I forget his name. But anyways, so 49 goals in the East Coast and you play in Alaska. So well, just just give me, what's that all like? Alaska is beautiful. Loved it. Love every minute of it. Uh, we had un we spent parts of two seasons, I guess, one full season and parts of two seasons, the second season there. We won a championship the second season. You got mountains surrounded you on one side or on three sides. You got the ocean in one side, water. Just beautiful. I mean, but you're I, there in the winter, isn't it? Well, dark? So here's the thing is like I always talk it up like it's the best place in the world. My wife looks at me and goes, Chris. You were there for three, four days. You were gone for two weeks. You were there for a week. You were gone for a week. Like you were in and out so much. You had no clue what it was like there. So she and was, she was there. 
Yeah, she was there with me. Uh, we were engaged the first year. We got married after that first year, and then uh, where's she, where's she from? She's from here. She's from Rolling Stone. Rolling Stone. So you guys uh, were through it all. Like, where did she where did she jump on and like actually start coming with you places? So we met in kindergarten. Uh, oh, same dear. kindergarten class. This is, this is Locals Week, folk. Folks, yep. Locals Week. That's that's yep. This is as local so as it gets. We started dating in um, grade twelve. When my first when I first got drafted to the to the Platers, she took the summer and we took the summer and we were hanging out quite a bit. But anyways, we started dating by the end of that summer. Um, she came with me. San Angelo, Texas, was the first year she came. So that was part of the yeah. That was your big break. That when that was your big break was when you finally hit the Central yeah. League. She's like, so she came with I, me. I finally got the big ticket. Let's hit St. Angelo together. <laughs> the the pregame meals were that's what happened. She started cooking the pregame meals and we started scoring goals. Oh, okay. Right? So you weren't going for the carbonara boats at uh what was it? Uh I think we we're CC's pizza or something. I don't know what it was there. Jeez, I remember uh, Harry there, uh, Justin Miser in Dayton was the one that taught me about Alfredo boats at uh, oh, Olive Garden. Olive Garden, jeez. Yeah. And then you dip the There's breadsticks in the Alfredo. Talk about those things. Well, seriously, and then you see what the hockey players are doing nowadays. And like our pregame meal was seeing how many breadsticks yep. we could bury with Alfredo. <laughs> <laughs> the game's changed the game sure has changed has. yeah they might they might they might be burying protein shakes well folks <laughs> we had breadsticks and alfredo and guess who was happier taking a pre-game nap i <laughs> bet you it was us <laughs> for sure 100 <100%. laughs> percent. okay uh so the first year is when you have your huge year which is crazy that a guy in Alaska, which you're probably on a one-way East Coast yep. deal, right? Yep. So you you could have been called up anywhere, but you're in Alaska. So they're like, well, he can score all the goals he wants up there. But these guys in Daytona Beach, Ohio, and Trenton and all those other places are easier to call up than the guy scoring 49 goals in Alaska, right? Well, that's the thing. I, I uh, left San Angelo and I had a... Uh... I had a two-way offer again from uh, Milwaukee, and I just, just didn't like the situation. And Alaska was calling, and the money wasn't anything different. It was probably less than the two-way contract. I just like living in Alaska. It just excited me. Like I just got excited. Is that and, right? Yeah, and I'm I'm going there. Like I loved it. Like this sounds awesome. Like I like this experience and. Sounds um, like you had the right attitude going there because there'd be a lot of guys going there saying, I don't want to do this. And then their play is not yep. going to be as good. Right. Yeah. So I went there and I just came off. Uh, I had sold a uh, shoulder surgery at the end of the season in San Angelo. So I was pretty much comatose all summer. I wasn't really doing like, I couldn't do much, just rehab. So I go to Alaska. Um, and, and like, you don't really realize it, but when you're, when you're on those East coast league, tr um, contracts like you sign a contract you're not guaranteed anything nothing right? no and you know you get to that. try out for the team <laughs> that's right i didn't realize that until we got there and we're like we're we move into our hotel or into our apartment and kind of sitting around we don't have a car you don't have much but you're looking at the roster and you're looking at the players and you're like all right i gotta pick it up the next few days here because i i'm not guaranteed anything here like there's some good players here so Anyways, make the team, and then it, that was the lockout year. So we had Scott Gomez come play for us. So you're wondering how we got 49 goals, and Scott oh, Gomez is my centerman. Okay. So there's a good reason. And then uh, uh, another – another I, I got a question, though. I got yeah. a question mid-pod here because we did this with Bobby Raymond, which I've actually seen you play. So I have an idea how you play. Um, I was only one game, the Wolves against the, the Winter Hawks. But um, just from that brief moment when you were like really old and couldn't really move like me, like you used to be able to, but I could see what type of player you are. So when you're on the power play and you're playing with Scott Gomez, are you, are you the, like the middle of the slot guy? Yeah, exactly. Are you? Like, don't touch a puck. Just go to either stand and in front shoot of it. Like when it goalie, gets to you, you're shooting you it. You shoot it. Yeah. That was the thing with him. Like, it was get open and he's going to get it to ice, you. Be ready yeah. to shoot. Get roll, yeah. get open, be ready to shoot. But a funny story with him is I'm known for taking a slap shot between the red line and the blue line. 
So if I'm skating with the puck up the ice, I'm taking a slap shot on that, right? So we're doing that a couple times in Alaska. I think he got fed up with it. A couple I times. wouldn't be okay with that either. <laughs> so he looked at me. We got back to the bench. And he goes, you stupid fuck. <laughs> you ever take a fucking shot like that again? We're not playing together. You want to score goals? You give me the puck. You go to the net and score goals. So from then on, I don't think I took another shot like that until I went to Germany. And then you, you end up scoring started. a couple and then you're known for it. So you just keep trying it. <laughs> <laughs> but he would he would just rip me on the bench for not giving him the puck in certain situations but you know what he made me like he made what? my well not made my career but i mean right he helped out so much in my career um from from playing with him and teaching me how to play and where to be as a goal scorer and where to shoot and have my stick and which way my feet should be f- facing you know like and uh, is he and so and and he's in the lockout in the East Coast. Is he so he is is, is, is he like that engaged. in practice? But like, is he not? Is he not in practice? Is he like doing that in practice with you, or is it is it only in games? Like he's just getting frustrated with you. Like you are not where you're supposed to be. Well, in games, in games specifically, in practices, I think we were all too hungover back then that it didn't matter what we were doing. We were just there to sweat it out and do flow drills and kind of get it over with. Um, yeah, so games, games, especially he would be getting mad and frustrated. I, I remember asking him to, uh, cause he was telling me to do something on the power play, the shooting drill and keep my feet in a certain situation, being able to shoot from that back foot and, and he passing it kind of behind me. And I'd have to take the one timer from behind me on the power play and he would pass me five or six and you could see him getting frustrated. And then he gave me two more and then he just skated away. And I'm like, well, where's he going? <laughs> like, and he just he just got mad. At he just left the ice. He's like I'm not passing this stupid idiot the puck anymore. <laughs> anyway, it, it was he made me such a such an elite. But that scorer same year, that yeah, level. you almost got fifty. The same year that right, yeah. Well, here's the thing: is like he sat out the fifty, like that last game of the season. We're in Vegas. Obviously, we finish in Vegas, and you know these coast league stories. When you go to Vegas, you you're not staying in your hotel room. So. We're partying in Vegas. You know, he's got the next day off and we got to go play. Uh, hit the post with five minutes left for 50. You know, ping <sighs> it off the post. And it's just like, shit, you know, like he's down there and you look up in the stands and he's up there with his arms in the air. He's like, what are you doing? You know, like you got to score that. <laughs> but he was awesome. He ended up getting me, um, uh, I guess my, my next contract was with a two way contract with low or with Albany, you know. Yeah, Albany and Alaska. So it's so still he, an East Coast AHL deal, though, and you're still yeah. like you're three three years in or so now. Like, yeah, and he got. I, he got I turned me, that uh, down my second year to go to Germany. Like, I yeah. I didn't want to do a East Coast AHL because I didn't want to just be tied in with one team. Yeah. So that was my. He got me a tryout with New Jersey, so I got to go to camp in New Jersey. And so, that was so kind of okay, like, okay. Hold on. Never we been to st- an NHL training camp, so this okay. is my opportunity. So I go there. I take that. No, so I hold on. Hold on. Alaska. I got to say something now. This is this is my podcast, and I have to say something now. Is you say he works with you after practice, and he's doing all this shit during a lockout, and then there'd be times where he'd get frustrated and leave the ice. Um but then he also is the guy that does that for you at the end of the season. So to me, it sounds like he saw something in you that yeah. he really liked you and that, that he wanted to help you and that he saw something that he could, he could, he could help you. And you know what? There were so many guys during the lockouts that came over to the second league in Germany or the first league in Germany. And I was there and they were just on vacation and they didn't really care. And their teammates would get pissed off at them. Like, but the fans were so excited to have them, but they didn't even really care about the games and who was winning or losing. It sounds like that guy cared, but he didn't just care about the team. He cared about you. And uh, well, that's pretty cool what he I, – I think he was pushing you, and those guys that are that good know what it takes, and I think he was yeah. showing you, right? I think I, he didn't just care about, like, us and the team. He cared about that whole city, the whole organization. Like, he, he, he had, like – he knew everybody was there to watch him. Um, you could tell, like – 
looking back, like he'd be reading a book in the intermission. He would bring a book to every game and like intermissions, he'd be sitting there in a stall reading a book. And you're like, like, is this what kind of book? Real? Like a novel. Like he'd just be reading a novel. And in the middle kind of, of the game. In the middle of a game. He would just come in and he'd just be before the game, just reading a novel, intermissions, reading a novel. And you're like, this can't be what they're doing in the NHL. And then like you, you say like, he, he's there to help me and her, like, he really did care about that city. He cared about what everybody thought of him. Why is he um, reading a book? Because if for me, hockey is about being, I, I think, not being it, being social and talking with everybody and making I, sure we're was communicating. Just, I, and I think that's, it was his way, weird, of, dude. Just his way of just kind of relaxing and just kind of settling down a little bit, or you know, he gets quite worked up. <laughs> Trust me, if you don't make a certain play, he gets worked up. You know, he wants it on his tape, right? So. Well, you know what is is, that there's the guys you play with that don't push you, that don't care. And that like when you, when you dump it into the corner and you kind of ease up and you kind of let that D man wheel the net or not get hit or whatever it is. I'll never forget when I went to Beatingheim with Justin Kelly, the goat, who's also ran a zoom practice for the boys. Um, I went in. And I tried to get the puck. Like I really thought I was trying um, on a four check on a power play. Yeah. And then we got back to the bench and this is when I'm pretty fresh in Germany. And we got back to the bench and he said to me, he goes, do you want to stay in Germany a long time? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, well, then we're going to need to get that puck on the power play and we're going to need to start scoring on the power play, but that needs to be your puck. And I was like, Okay. Hey, got it. Yeah. <laughs> got it. Uh, next time, that is my puck, sir. Yeah, that's my puck. <laughs> yeah. And you need those guys, right? And if, that's right. If, if those guys accept that, then it's accepted every time, right? Yep, that's right. So there are special people in the game. And I guess uh, Gomez never would have guessed he was coming up today. He's not on the notes. So um, too bad he couldn't play that last game to get you to 50. But hey. Yeah, they worked out. We had a good team. It was good. We had a good couple of good playoff runs there. That no, but yeah. So the second year you win it, and you're with uh, Mayday Miser. So uh, yeah. what kind of roles he played on the team? Is he the third line checker guy? Just uh, good in the bar. Uh, good with the team. Just just a great guy in general, really. But shockingly, shut, can shut shockingly, down anybody, right? Shockingly, the third line guy. That's perfect. And uh, the glue guy to our dressing room, 100%. Uh, story after story after story. Uh, beer after beer after beer, as you can imagine. And he, he, just a- he, yeah, that, I tell you, I think my professional career, I don't know if it, it, went, it flourished or suffered based on how many beers he made me drink my rookie yeah. year. And just that crooked little smile he'd have. <laughs> the ugly teeth and just a, just a <laughs> smile on his face. And he just... <laughs> How did uh, you not adore that guy? Oh, he's the best. Yeah. Harry, yeah. Okay, so you guys actually win it, though. Anything about the uh, – I heard um, – so you're playing with Scott Gomez the first year, but then the second year, okay, um, yeah. I know this because I talked to Harry Miser, episode something, having too many folks that can't keep track anymore. Um, but Justin Miser, best episode yet, maybe. Um The second year in Alaska, when you're on the two way, you're on a 50 goal pace again, which you scored 49 the first year, but Gomez is back in the show. You're on another 50 goal pace without him. Uh, But then I hear as the miser called him, sorry for burping the mic folks, the verge, the verge. Um, I saw that guy play in the second league of Germany, the Danish league. Um, And that guy can run a power play. And as Gomez is a passer, so is the Verge. I have seen him play. I would have, I would have loved to play with that guy someday. Yep. But uh, yeah, he's he's not that far off Gomez, is he? he he's such a fucking goofball. And uh, <laughs> when he first started, the the coach is like, "Who you want to play with?" And I'm like, "I want to play with Philion." And he was my buddy at the time, and I liked playing with him. I enjoyed it. He was a French guy, a great guy, loved him. Um, and then the coach is like, no, I, you got to play with this Levitt kid. I'm like, I'm not playing with that kid. He's a fucking idiot, you know? And 
this guy was an absolute, just a menace, just an unbelievable guy off the ice. But it took a couple months to kind of get used to him, get used to his personality, a milk bag body on him. And it was the first guy that I'd ever seen that could do that Crosby, you know, like the heel to heel. Oh, oh and just opening up the hips. Perfect. That, he, yeah, he would go he would around the, the net opener. on the power play, open up the hips, and yep. he would be able to see the whole ice. And, exactly. Oh, Take the tape, snipe, like every time. Just a little have, baby sauce right in the wheelhouse. Yeah, Wasn't I know. fast, couldn't skate, was was weak uh, never took uh, it to the net always pulled up every yeah. single time he pulled up you hear us verge yeah, yeah you tell me you need some time to come in the pod verge well guess what you're getting called out for pulling up <laughs> but man could he put a pass on your tape and just get open one time and that's what that guy could do and as a 20 or 21 year old whatever he was it was pretty <laughs> pretty impressive to see at that at that point in time so yeah, he, got to put, play with he, him put a, and... he put up a ton of points, and you uh, you were on a 50-goal pace, but this is about you, not the Verge. And um, you also get your first call-ups to the AHL. So, you know what? You got called up to the NHL at some point, so I'm not going to ask about your first AHL call-up, but you played 37 games that year. So um, what role are you playing for 37 games, and, like, do you get a chance at all? The American League, it was different, so – but that New Jersey system is just different. It, it's, it's hard to explain, but, you know, the draft picks, they get the first run of it. Um, they're very, very lo- loyal organization um, to their draft picks and to the way they, they promote players and the way they demo players. Um, so you're up and down the lineup. The lineup changed every single day. You had such talented players there. You'd have great chemistry one game you go out and get a, a goal and a couple assists or you get a point or something. You feel like things are clicking. And the next day you go back to the rink and you're not in the lineup, first of all, because you had so many guys or uh, the lineups are all changed. And it was just different. Uh, the, the whole couple of years that I spent with that organization was, it was different. Um, but in Al- like in Albany, like I was ready to go back to Alaska. I wasn't playing that much. They're, you're not used to okay, playing. Slow, slow down. Lines, right? Slow down. Slow down. Uh-oh. Nope. We got to talk Uh-oh. about it. We got to talk okay. about it. Okay. Because um, I, you know what? And I agree is uh, yeah. when I, when I went to Syracuse for a very brief time where I was always on the fourth line with the fighter, I only saw what went on in the games, you know? Yep. Um, I saw that like, Joachim Lindstrom or whoever was on the top lines would score three points with one centerman the first game. And then the next night you go to a different town and they play with completely different people. And I'm like, how does that make sense? Why? I don't understand. Why, why don't they play with the guy they did good with the night before? But you said you were ready to go back to Alaska. Well, Guess what, folks? We're not going back to Alaska. We are not going there because he did score 32 goals, even if he didn't feel that much a part of it. 32 goals in the AHL, right? And you're all in a, what a one way or uh, so that you would have signed. That, that was the next year. Oh, that's the next year. Jeez, I'm yeah, a year ahead. That was the Jeepers next year. Creep, so that sorry. that Albany year, I, I think I scored seven maybe in my I don't know how many games I played. 20 or 30, maybe? I skipped ahead a year. I thought you That's were scoring right. 32. So I I was just kind of like, I seen Alaska going for it. Like, you know, like the playoff experience from the year before. And it was like, like I got to, I want to go back there. So I actually asked to go back. I was like, can I just go back to, we weren't making playoffs in Albany. And I was like, can I go back and play playoffs? And they obliged. They let me go. That's why you want to play hockey is to try yeah. and win stuff. That's, That's the right. whole point. Yeah. The whole regular season is just to see who gets to actually play for fun. Like, yep. like the regular season sucks. It, like it's, it's, it's almost as bad as practice. Yeah. hundred right? percent. And uh, that's the, like you said, it's the fun part and everyone plays for keeps, right? It's, it's just, you get back there. Like I got back to Alaska and it was like playoff hockey. And it was like, this is awesome. Like this is, we filled our arena every single game and it was the loudest place I've ever been in my life. And yeah, and we, we had a close group of a close group of guys and we knew we were something special. We just needed to prove it on the ice and we did. It was good. It was awesome. 
and that's the year you win it. That's the year you win it with with Harry. Um, yeah. Geez, that's exciting. So, I we we won't get into any miser <laughs> stories from that nope, part of his life. No, no, <laughs> no, this is a PG. No, he's a, no, he was actually one of my favorite teammates I've ever had in my career. And it sounds like you had a great time with him too. So he is one of those great people that uh, changes lives, I guess. Um, he made Dayton, Ohio fun for me, which there was a, like, if I don't have that guy in my life, maybe it's not fun. Yeah. But yeah. then that podcast where he makes his basement um, the sponsor and uh, his Woody's pub. And now all of a sudden we have sponsors folks, which is men pro elite training, um, which uh, get your kids booked in, get them working out of the Owen sound area. But we have another one. This is real. I could get compensated for this one. Stay in blue.ca. You want to go on a holiday in the blue mountain Collingwood area folks go to www.stayinblue.ca and put in your promo code, Wally 20 for 20% off a three night minimum stay. And that means that uh, we got paid for drinking beers here tonight, folks. So you just got to go on vacation. You just got to put in Wally 20 and go to stay in blue.ca. That's pretty cool. Isn't it? Just saying. There you go. You know, anyways. Okay. So now we are, we want it. Do any other good stories like so in Alaska? Alaska, I it just uh, Alaska. It's, it's, well, you get, you get the moose. Moose would come up to your back balcony and just kind of kind of looking for apples or looking for food or something. They just hang out, and you pull in your apartment complex, and they're just laying there at the side of the road and just kind of chilling out. A full moose Drive, driving down the middle of driving down in the winter night, and there's a moose walking beside your car, and you just, so it's like the turkeys are out here. Yeah, it's very very similar, right? Um, the uh, playoff time, we went uh, deep in the in playoffs both years, and it was uh, you leave, you win a series, you go to the bar, you party, whatever, you're coming out of the bar, and it's two a.m. and guys are going golfing. You know, it, it's a different world at that point in time, but it was it's fun. Guy, it was no, awesome. Yeah. No, I, I think I think experiencing different things, right? Than like what's yeah. normal, and Alaska would be different. Okay, um, so now we got to get into that actual thirty-two goal season with the uh, Devils. Um, so that was the HL team you got a, a sniff with the first time, and then yep. after almost a fifty-goal campaign and winning the championship, do you get a one-way HL deal? So I was on a one-way HL deal. So I like. So in then you're mind, getting a chance. You're getting a I chance. Knew I was getting you're a ready chance to rock. I was there. Like in my mind, I was there. Like I'm making this team. Like without a question, they're keeping me. Little do you know, like you get the training camp and there's three thousand players, and you're just like, all right, maybe I don't. Like what's happening here? So I was actually my wife and I were in a hotel till Christmas. Your after wife Christmas. was with you through all that too. Yep. Yeah. So we spent we 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 were in a hotel room, a residence in kind of like a little, small little apartment until after Christmas. And this is after like playing exhibition games and I'd score one to two goals, every exhibition game. Like I was like, I, I had confidence, right? I was, I was rolling thinking like I'm making this team, no big deal. And I saw I was a healthy scratch the first seven games of the season, not what any player wants to do. And you're watching your team get shit kicked by 12, six and eight, two. And, and you, like, they don't put you in. I don't put you in. Because they they're giving their draft picks opportunities, which I guess that's what you got to do. They got to learn, right? They got to learn. But it, it's just, it finally got an opportunity, ran with it. Uh, we were we were a team that we had six lines on our team in Lowell. Okay. So we had six forward lines. So that's, that's 18 shower, the, forwards. Shower, the showers were stalls. <laughs> exactly. I, yeah. So. Like so it's a it's a great great team atmosphere, isn't it? Like you guys right? all feel like you're part of a team. Yeah. You really feel like you're all one, and you're really all in it together, right? So once I finally got playing, it was uh, you play a couple games, you'd sit one, play a couple games, sit one, and it was just it got it was stupid. And today we got injuries, and we had and NHL this is with players. thirty-two goals. 
Yeah. 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 I think I played a total of 65 games that year. So I, like you, like I said, you'd play two, one, sit one, play two, and then you'd have a bunch of injuries. Uh, we had how many NHLers do we have on our team? We had Dan McGillis, Grant Marshall, Dan Lacature, Scott Lachance, um, John Fahey, uh, Jimmy Fahey, Mike Motto. Uh, man, we had a, we had just handfuls of NHL hockey players on our team, and it was like we couldn't win a game. We were last place, miserable, miserable. Just the atmosphere of it. And, um, and why well, it's but, like it's the whole thing just is weird in the HL and like when you're in an organization, right? Like exactly when you're when you're in North America and you're in an organization, like they only have certain people they can call up and they only have who they have. You can get put in to a shitty organization that needs a guy because they didn't make playoffs and five guys got hurt, and all of a sudden you go to the NHL, have a couple big big games and you're there you can say for the Leafs right now why don't you have fun signing with them as a forward or a defenseman and see how you do right like good luck cracking that lineup but uh, there are some other teams in the league that you know what maybe you're gonna get a chance and it, it, it is all about what organization you're in. So you do play that year with the devils and score yeah. a bunch of goals and you just keep scoring goals. So I did have this down in my notes in my head is that that last year, the OHL is the year you start scoring. Then you go to, sorry, if I get this shit wrong, my bad. Nope. The next year you go to the coast, you score a little bit and you grind it out then you score a bunch in the Central League. Then you score even more in the Coast. Then you're you're playing with Scott Gomez, and he's he. You think he's the reason why you're scoring so many goals, but it's not Scott Gomez because then the Verge comes in and he's dishing it to you too, and whoever else. And then you're scoring just as many again, and you're on your way to the AHL. And then the next year you get 32 goals in the AHL, and then you sign with. So you then you leave the Devils and you go with the Pittsburgh Penguins. 